Okay, so I just live traced this and it isn't finished and live traced until you say expand at the top. And, and once you can actually like click on them with the small selection tool and see all the anchor points, then you know you have a vector. And you wanna make sure that when you live trace, you are clicking on ignore white so that there are no vector shapes that are white. You know, they're only black. And now I'm just going in with the smooth tool and cleaning up little things that don't reflect my inking choices. Like every once in a while, this kind of thing will happen. Oh, where is it? Yeah, right there. Like just a little misstep for whatever reason in the line. And smoothing that out can make a big difference. You know, just to the detail and professionalism of your work. And of course, you can use the pencil tool as well to smooth. And when you live trace, they are not um, strokes. You know, th these are closed paths. They have an inner edge and an outer edge. So you have to remember that. You have to treat them both separately, which is great because you can, to me, it's great because you can make them thinner or you can make them thicker. So it can be very expressive, but if you're going for technical lines, a stroke might be what you want using the pin tool instead of live tracing. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. So now let me show you another method. So once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna save this. I'm not even going to save it as an AI file. I'm just going to save it as an EPS because that's a transferable vector file. Because I haven't saved this in Illustrator yet. So instead of Carl test to live trace, I'm now going to call it Carl assignment seven line art. And it's just a solid black EPS. I'm going to keep all the defaults and it will be there on the desktop. Okay, so now that this is saved as an EPS, if I double click and open it, it will open as a PDF preview. And you notice that it's not all that black. That's because this is a CMYK black, which is the default, but that's fine. You'll see how we deal with that when we color, but it's all perfectly smooth, right? So that's some nice clean black line work and we'll go to coloring that soon. Not obsessing over it. So now I can close this. I've already saved it as an EPS. I don't need to save it as an AI because we're not gonna do that much else with it within Illustrator. We just wanted the line art. But now I'm gonna bring in this other one. And this is just a pencil sketch. And if I open that in Illustrator without cleaning it up first, I wanna show you what live trace will do because this is a bad use of live trace. Even though I think it's a good illustration idea. <coughs> you know, I can make a big, I can go to the image trace options. I can go to the default or the setting, custom setting of black and white logo, right? Ooh, that does not look as clean as my first one did, right? I can play with making the threshold more, right, or less. Well, and this will really show how these tools work. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I can try fewer paths to smooth it out, but then I might lose some detail. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then uh, fewer corners for sure. Kind of smooth it out. And then noise, yeah, I don't want much noise. Let's clean that up. And that's probably about as good as I can get. Maybe I'll try the threshold a little bit. Yeah, that's probably about as good as I can get. 
And then of course I want to ignore white. If I don't ignore white, look what it what it is. It's a bunch of white and black shapes, right? So as soon as I hit ignore white, it will get rid of that white. Because we just want black line work. Okay? So if that's the best I can get, I hit hit expand. And that's one way I can work with this image, right? To live trace it. But then I'm going to spend a lot of time cleaning it up, right? Like using the lasso to select all of this debris and hitting delete, right? So what's another way I can do it? Well, if I bring in that same file, If I open it with Illustrator, let's see, can I do this? Lock this layer, make a new layer. I want to open. from assignment seven. This is why it's nice to put things on the desktop. I don't have to move everything. Let's move it to the desktop so it's easy to find. So I'm gonna copy it, command C, I'm going to bring it into the same file just so I can compare it directly. So this is now on a new layer. I'm going to make it bigger. This is just a raster file, of course. I'm going to show you how you can digitally ink, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is double click on the layer and dim the image to 50%. Onion skin it, lock it, make a new layer on top. I'm going to change my defaults to a black fill with no stroke, an empty stroke, right? And then I'm going to use a new tool, which is the blob brush tool, because I want it to be like hand inking. Now, just like the pencil tool, with the blob brush, let me make this nice and big, I don't need the color guide. With the blob brush tool, I can double click and I can set it to be more smooth or more accurate. I'm gonna put it right in the middle and this is what I love. With a tablet, I can set it to be pressure sensitive to different sizes with different amounts of variation between it. So let's try 23. And you see I have it at a slight oval. So that's 23. So if I push hard, it fills it all in. But if I hit lightly, it's barely there. And because I have it set right in the middle, it's going to kind of smooth out as I go. If I wanted it smoother, I could go all the way to here and then look like I could be as jaggedy as anything and it will smooth it out for me. So I'm going for really smooth. So you customize your digital pen using what's called the blob brush tool. And what I love about it is it makes, just like Live Trace, it makes um, filled paths. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller. Let's go to like 18. And the angle, yeah, I'll use the angle. And the roundness, not quite perfectly round. And now I have this as the thing I'm comparing to, right? And you can see how clumsy that is. So now I'm just going to ink and let it kind of smooth it out for me as I go. This little domino mask is really cute. Now the blob brush is different than the paintbrush in Illustrator. The paintbrush actually gives you a stroke instead of a fill path. And each time you use the paintbrush, like the pencil tool, it will make a new path. The blob brush will only make a new path when it's separate. But whenever you overlap with an existing path, 
it will blob it together as one big path. So you don't need to use Pathfinder to combine things anymore. I'm going to try to, I don't know if it's improve on my son's design, but I'm going to give it a little bit of bumpiness here in the kernels. Still want it to have that character. A little bit like Spider-Man, those little bumps. And you, got, you get to kind of put your personality into it. Okay, and now the, the husk part has to do with how much pressure I put down for how thick the line gets. The one downside of digitally inking in Illustrator, even though the tool is nice and smoothing, is that you can't tilt the screen, right? Like you can tilt your, your tracing paper as you're inking for certain curves. And that's a little bit of a pain. In Photoshop, you can actually use the hand tilt tool to tilt the, the monitor. But it's kind of a pain too, so I don't do that very often. So I like some of what I did, but I'm going to hit Command-Z to get back. Yep. I think I'm going to leave it open. Okay, and then he's got these little stick figure arms. I might just expand those a little bit. So they show up a little bit better in an illustration. But keep them simple. That's the charm. Get a little bit thicker at the bottom of the husk here. Some of these linear elements in there. This is a very different kind of illustration, right? than the forking bull one. Thicken up the inking there. Yeah. So let's look at that comparison. From this to this, right? So sometimes you want to just be able to hand ink, especially when you can't prep the file fully. I can also just use this blob brush to fill in. It's kind of like a superhero. And then part of it is this hand done speech bubble. Which I can try to be really confident and do. <laughs> that worked pretty well. Let me try from the top and work all the way around. It's almost impossible to do a speech bubble in one pass, right? So usually if I'm inking I'll do like a section, rotate the <coughs> rotate the canvas, section, section. But in Illustrator that's a bit of a limitation. But now this is the beauty of Illustrator. I can select individual things and then move them. And stretch them together. So this shows you that these are